My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Let's begin from the last verse of today's Gospel. He who hears you, hears me. What a privileged moment to listen to Jesus directly at this moment. And for me, what a sense of responsibility, like for every preacher, to lend his voice to our Lord at the same time as each of us hears Jesus. Now these days as schools are resuming, some teachers will dread the constant cry of keep quiet, keep quiet, which they find themselves repeating many times during the day, in the week, and so on. Keep quiet, keep quiet. In fact, for the teachers, it can be a good human reminder for the presence of God. Keep quiet. Depending on the age group or gender, some students can be noisier than others. For that, some teachers actually never forget the names of those students that disturb most. Maybe you think of certain names in your own class. Naughty boys, naughty girls. This is not time to criticize. It's just an observation. In fact, I remember one. Let's pray for them. I may even be one of the naughty ones. When I hear Jesus today in the gospel categorically call some cities by name, it makes me think of what every teacher goes through these days. Keep quiet. Hello, keep quiet. Add your name. Here is Jesus' version. Woo to you, Chorazin. Woo to you, Bethsaida. Woo to you, Chorazin. Woo to you, Bethsaida. You can see that these are the naughty students of Jesus by name Chorazin and Bethsaida for now. Both St. Luke and St. Matthew in their Gospel accounts did not forget these names mentioned by our Lord as tough places for the preacher. Both cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, are by the shores of the lake of Genesaret. Think of port cities. Woo to you, Chorazin. Woo to you, Bethsaida. And our Lord even go on to include Capernaum. Jesus, these people really got on your nerves. Why is Jesus displeased with these cities? But why? Jesus goes on to say, For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. St. Matthew tells us that Jesus began to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. This provides a good context for what follows, actually, what we will be privileged to hear in tomorrow's Gospel of Jesus' satisfaction with those ones who have imbibed his teaching, the babes. I thank you, Father, that you have revealed these things to babes. In that way, one can appreciate the contrast between the naughtiness of Chorazin and Bethsaida, these people, and the babes of tomorrow's Gospel. Chorazin and Bethsaida have displeased our Lord by their own repentance. What can be done then? How much it will please Jesus when any of us, having been rebellious, return to show remorse and mend our ways? Likewise, it pleases a teacher that a student apologizes for bad behavior, promising to improve his or her character. The same follows at home when any offender simply apologizes for misconduct. Now let's all practice this returning to show repentance and show that determination to improve our conduct. It's also time to practice the virtue of docility that enables us to adhere to what is being said to us for our own good, very key for spiritual guidance. As a good teacher, Jesus, you go on to one of the consequences of not listening. But it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. Still referring to these naughty people, Chorazin and Bethsaida. Only a teacher wants anyone who does not adhere to instruction could be heading into failure. Perhaps because he's blind or she is blind to key information that is needed to succeed. Hence on judgment day, say school exam, 
life experience, but above all, on God's judgment, failure awaits the naughty ones. I hope, Jesus, that Corazin, Bethsaida, the naughty ones, take correction as from today. Woe to you, Corazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. You too and I, even though it may sound for us as keep quiet, keep quiet. We want to take correction whenever we receive it. But let's think of Simon Peter. He's the disciple whom the Lord corrects most in the gospel. In fact, the most beaten, we might say. The Lord is constantly correcting him until the last moment. He tells him, follow me. Why ask me about John? Follow me. We also told by tradition that Simon Peter, at a point, was given up and was fleeing from Rome, only to realize that he returned and was crucified upside down. The sign of Peter crucified upside down, perhaps, is the most eloquent of this receptacle of a hard head, which, in order to be merciful, he turns downwards even while giving the supreme testimony of love for his Lord. Peter does not want to end his life by saying, I have learned my lesson, but by saying, since my head will never learn, I put it down, prefers to be crucified upside down. Now at the top, the feet that the Lord washed is what shows. Those feet are for Peter, the receptacle through which he receives the mercy of his friend and our Lord. Jesus, maybe I think that the good habit of listening to the teacher, to the preacher, is impossible for some people. But we have good examples, other good examples. St. Jerome, the one we are celebrating today all over the church, has been outstanding for his learning and expertise in scriptural texts and interpretation. Another example is Blessed Carla Acutis, remarkable for his good conduct towards his parents and house helps. St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, who lived the little way of complete trust in Jesus' love and her superiors. Blessed Alvaro del Portillo acknowledged as a very happy and studious child who never caused problems. He was affectionate, straightforward, happy, responsible and kind, as the testimony goes. We can look at Our Lady, who listened attentively and uttered her yes. Pope Francis encourages every person to learn from her how to say yes to the stubborn endurance and creativity of those who, undaunted, are ever ready to start over again. It's time to repent, taking correction. Finally, Jesus, you are a model of listening. Have you subjected yourself to the guidance of Mary and Joseph? We ask that both of them obtain for us the grace of repentance such that we may please you always. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.